do you still practice? Yeah. Yeah. How much? 40 hours do? a week. Yeah. 40 Bill. hours a week. Bill. Yeah. So part time. <laughs> 40 hours a month. Part time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Craft whiskey for sure. It's very it's a, waxy. Did you say craft or crap? Craft. 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 Oh. Yeah. Craft, craft, craft. I do not want to bring craft whiskey, man, to box show. I want to try that for you. <laughs> Nationwide State Firm, Allstate, Geico, um, Farmers, they are in the litigation business. They sell insurance, and then they're in the litigation business, and they hire lawyers to do it. But when you go and pierce into the company and go in against them, they hire their best lawyer. Welcome to this episode of Bourbon of Proof. And we have, we're coming first of all from Louisville, which is the home of bourbon. 96% of the world's bourbon, right, comes from Louisville. Accurate, Chris? It's, it's a made up number, but yes. <laughs> all right, Chris Hart, who, who knows more about whiskey than anybody here, maybe. Gene's gonna probably try to challenge him, but Whiskey Pete, Whiskey Neat, uh, Chris Hart's gonna co host today. And we have two special guests. Both are lawyers, both do, do completely different things. Um, Gene Nassif. Here is a now doing family law, yep. right? But more importantly, he has his own distillery or two, doing his own thing. We're gonna do his whiskey first. Then we have Troy. Gatris. Gatris, like Gattris, mattress. Yeah. Gatris. We, I mean, we've already had a couple episodes we filmed, so we're feeling good. We got to get you guys speaking, caught speak, up. Speaking in cursive. All right, looking good. I look good. But Troy comes to us from West Virginia. Uh, and you know, well, first let's let's hear about this first one, Gene, because we want to get right to your stuff. Absolutely. Let's hit it first. This NASA Family Reserve, this was um, actually our second product that we put out. Uh, two years ago, well, a year and a half ago for my wedding, September of 2020, I released batch one of September what of 2020? Don't say 11. Uh, September 5th. Oh, I was gonna, I, I, I mean, I'm, his wife's probably watching. Yeah, but uh, the cool thing about this is I wanted an entry level thing. My parents, grandparents couldn't handle 140 proof that I was mm -hmm. bottling. So I thought to myself, I want to do something. 140 proof. He's yeah. Really love this guy. So He's this done a few hazmats. I've done a lot. I've got hazmats? two here. Yeah, hazmat, hazmat over 140 okay. proof. Uh, one right you here. You can't carry one on a plane, right? That's correct. Yep. Right, right below meth. Correct. <laughs> basically <laughs> meth. Yeah. Uh, Kills COVID. You can run a car yeah. on it too. So it's basically fuel. Wow. At this point, 26 year whiskey might with be a flux cheaper capacitor? than. capacitor? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> might be cheaper than gas before you know it though. Think about that. Policy. Yeah, so uh, wanted something that was entry level. I wanted to explore ben blending straight whiskeys. Uh, at that point in time, a few people had done it, but it was typically perceived as being like a, a lower level. A, a blended whiskey legally can be grain neutral spirit along with bourbon or rye or whatever other whiskey. Mm -hmm. I wanted to make it premium. I wanted to use old light whiskey, bourbon and rye, and create a new profile that was different than just a blended bourbon, blended rye, or even a light whiskey. How long did it take you to come up with this? Uh, drunken adventures. It was a, it was a so few, five minutes. Yeah, <laughs> seriously. Is that like point one? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Point, from point one to point, point oh five. Yeah. 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 I knew that the light whiskey provided the good finish, which you're probably tasting. I love the vanilla toffee finish, and then you add the rye for spice. How you and say the this is light? For, it's under seven proof. Yeah. Uh, light yeah, yeah, whiskey. Yeah, yeah. It's light. Yeah. It's light. yeah. Light whiskey. So uh, that started it all. Like I said, batch one was September of 2020. We just hit batch 20. Uh, really wow. proud of that. We're now in 10 states. We were drinking a lot of this on before we did the bourbon trail this week. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, we, this was very good. We, I drank a lot of this. And it, was, it was humbling too that, I mean, first off, we blew up in California. Mm -hmm. So people in California saying, oh my God, I've heard of you. I saw some guy at a Lambo and a bottle of my stuff in front of it. I was like, oh my God. And then the moment- Did you know you're gonna be the Lambo whiskey? This, you know, the I mean, I'm cool with that. Uh, Are you? It, it's, a, it's, an, it's a surreal feeling. It's right. beyond surreal. And the, the most humbling thing was uh, Justin's House of Bourbon and then one of the other guys locally here. Started carrying it. Started carrying really? it. Really, you're at Justin's? Yeah, I mean, oh, we're, we're all over Kentucky, but yeah. like the, the point was, it was humbling to be in Kentucky, whiskey country. Dude from Iowa, Lebanese family, no whiskey but history. How, but how did you make that pivot from like you being a lawyer? Um, and Passion. Like, yeah, fuck it. I right? loved drinking whiskey. Yeah. And I loved the experience of it and I loved the craft of it. And I loved everything about that. And I thought to myself, 
One, if I can get into the market, I want to. And mm. two, I know I can do it different than everybody else. And I think when we first started, I mean, when people look back, and I, I told this to you the other day, Jim Beam used to be the light whiskey was overlooked by everybody. They said nobody can sell light whiskey. But what do you consider light whiskey? Light whiskey is distilled higher than bourbon or rye. So it's distilled between 160 and 190 proof. It's the difference it's not between vodka. a rare steak and a, and a well done steak. Vodka's yeah. well done steak. Nobody wants to eat a well done steak. I do, I kind of like beef jerky. You're a bad person. <laughs> uh, uh, so rare whiskey is that 160 to 190. It's basically medium, medium on a whiskey scale. So as you distill, the higher the proof you go, the less of those flavors get cooked yep. out of it. Mm. And uh, Gene's actually one of the few people, and we actually know each other, we've been talking for years. This is wild. Because we both are in the same industry. Uh, that, that there's, there's actually, he's one of the few people actually selling light whiskey Calling in, it light in whiskey. large amounts. And wow. these, these people at Beam, like they would have laughed you out of the fucking room wow. if you said to them, I'm going to this create a company and say fuck. Okay. You can't say fuck. And start fuck bottling else. light whiskey. Like you can't they, say balls or anything like that. Or nuts. No, you can say nuts. Oh. But yeah. You know, on like, the radio, <laughs> you can't say butthole, referring nuts. to your actual butthole, but you can call someone a butthole. Huh. That's a plug in the. Yeah. yeah, okay. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But uh, like I said, the, the light whiskey, nobody said you could, could be successful with it. And then there was this article, um, Aaron Goldfarb. Uh, the Return of Light Whiskey. He's a great guy, but like I read his book and the then thrillers? he featured, um, no, 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 the the Whiskey Guide or Bourbon Guide, one of his like original books, and they had, we'll get to it, but he had the Pappy Jello shot, and that gave me some inspiration for some stuff we'll talk about. But like Light Whiskey, every why, nobody I mean, cares. Do you about. do you still practice? Yeah, yeah. How much? Forty hours a week. <laughs> Forty Bill. hours a week. Bill. Yeah. So part time. <laughs> Forty hours a month. Part time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Build 40 hours a week. Can you hand me that, that Pittsburgh whiskey back there? Because I'm going to talk to Troy about uh, this, this, one, little this, one, this one, yeah. yeah this is it. <laughs> Troy gave us me so interesting about Troy. So he's in West Virginia, but went to law school in Pittsburgh, and I'm from Pittsburgh. And your son is at Duquesne he's in at Pittsburgh. Duquesne. Yeah, Duquesne Law. He's going to start. He's a Duquesne undergrad. And he's going to start Duquesne University Law School. One of my dad's very good friends is the dean of law there, John Rago, and he's the funniest guy on the planet. Like he grew up like hiding my little piggies I had as a kid, and, like fucking with us. <laughs> that crack up. But yeah, this is the city of champions bourbon. Like, have you ever had a Pittsburgh whiskey before, Chris? Never. I, I was excited. It. We were talking about it off camera beforehand. <laughs> I haven't had it either. I had my son pick it up because they make a bunch of other stuff. It's called Wiggle Whiskey. Uh, so they have a whole line. Oh, they boy. just came out with a bourbon one. And I thought I want to give Wiggle Whiskey a hard time, but there's something called Whistle Pig, and it gets away with it. So. True, man. I mean, that's shit. fair. I just hope it doesn't taste like icy light. Yeah, Iron City's terrible. I, I see is regular. <laughs> it's better. They came out with an icy twist at some time when they tried oh, to flavor it. it was I don't know. The the shot in a beer back on the South Side worked a lot better when it was. Yeah. The Jacks and other places. Yeah, so Troy. Troy's a lawyer in West Virginia. Does a lot of like consumer fraud protection stuff and just crazy. I mean, it's more relevant than ever right now. Um, but you practice all, the, I mean, everywhere because you right. do it. Uh, so for the first 20 some years, did all personal injury work. So you gotta give me some special. I, I'm listening, cheers okay. buddy. <laughs> no, 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 you have to. <laughs> <laughs> cheers. You're the experts on this one. <laughs> the, uh, I mean, it smells terrible. Smells like a pot still. Smells like a pot still. Okay. I smell a lot of, uh, Mm, median household income under Iron, 30K. Mm, yeah, household. <laughs> Iron ore. I smell the uh, Monongahela and Allegheny. <laughs> this could, they should call it the confluence. Some, <laughs> some iron ore. Oh. Heirloom corn and uh, malt heavy. I think malt's a secondary grain. Oh, malt's and then guy. wheat. Knows this malt shit? is Look at these guys. Wheat's secondary third, grain. yeah. Damn. Look at them. Look at them. Two I just smell, I smell Troy Palam Palamos. I can't even say uh, that after these. You know what? So. Yes. That's going to be good with time. Guaranteed that's a pot still. Yeah, but that's going to be good with time. You give that this is four or six years. Okay. It's got to be a little lighter, though. I mean, it can't be high proof. It's two but years. It's a <coughs> craft whiskey for sure. It's very did waxy. Did you say craft or crap? Craft. 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 Oh, yeah. Craft. 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 I do not want to bring craft whiskey, man, to Bob's show. I want to try all. that four years <laughs> I know that much. Dude, we don't drink a really good whiskey. You do not get back out. <laughs> but, uh, but this is just special because it tells your story, like our story yeah, intertwined. That's right. So the first 26 years, practiced regular. First 26? Is there a second 26? I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, need, I need, I'm in my second act. Uh, so anyway, did all the uh, personal injury work, accident work, did it all like that. 
And then all of a sudden, uh, hired a few people that came from the Attorney General's office. Wow. They were doing consumer protection, helping people out, wiping out debt, um, taking care of you know credit card companies, going against credit card companies, banks, uh, debt collectors. And now we're doing data breach and healthcare data breach. And it's taken us all across the country. So it's very nice. So did you, I mean, anytime you go against the big boys that have like billions of dollars and you start uh -huh. targeting them, dude, it's a, it's a different thing. When I do product defund cases, like, on, it's a different level. Like you have to think differently because they're. My wife's like, is this the time we need to start getting like bulletproof truck to roll around mm -hmm. in, right? Because it gets scary. So oh, are you with that? Really? No, because it is like you watch these shows, Goliath and stuff. There's a lot of truth to it. Mm -hmm. Yet, Bob, you're right, and yeah. that's true. It's one thing when not minimizing the acts and stuff. Nationwide, State Farm, Allstate, Geico, yeah. um, Farmers, they hire. They're in the. In, they are in the litigation business. They sell insurance and then they're in the litigation business and they hire lawyers to do it. But when you go and pierce into the company and go in against yeah. them, they hire their best lawyers yeah. and they hire the, they put, there's no value they put on it. It's blank, every dollar blank check. It's a blank check. Blank and, check. And they're like, fuck you, we're never, we're gonna drive us all the way because we're gonna prove a point and drown you out. And if you, you start, win against these people. Well, oh, yeah, yeah. yes. Yes, because at the end of the day, here's what happens. I look all fancy, of course you well, can. Hey, hey, <laughs> Wearing a fucking hey, scarf. Hey. <laughs> hey. Wait, can you make a scarf and ascot? Like, when does a scarf No, I cannot. I picked this up in Italy, so. A oh, but you travel to Italy a lot. I do. I'm right. getting ready to leave next Are week. Are you a big wine guy? Uh, you have to be. If you... Yes, I like wine, but not a lot of it uh, because it makes me sleepy. Oh. Uh, so, you know what? I just drink. Do you know yeah, what Chris's yeah. favorite wine is? Where's Barella. the bourbon? Oh, where's the bourbon? <laughs> <laughs> but that's the fun thing about it is we moved ourselves from talking about um, insurance adjusters to risk managers and companies who are not normally used to seeing six jurors or twelve jurors. They don't see the jurors. They don't want to see. Yeah. It's normally a they, don't, they don't want to see. A, yeah. They don't want to see literally a jury panel. So if you can bring them there, so first first twenty some years of trying cases. Next thing you know, you're dealing with lawyers who are not trying cases, that's motions. Oh, and next thing you know, wrong. you're like, let's go to trial, and you have a whole different attitude, the same way I heard you talking earlier on a couple mm -hmm. casts. And that was, hey, I'll just go in there and knock them out. Yeah, I'll give a hey, shit. Yeah. You're like, well, we can't get the deposition taken. You're like, don't care. You know what? I'll do it at trial. Yeah. I'll take yeah. this deposition at trial. Yeah. And that's the fear factor, is like, well, are you serious? You'll do that? Like, yeah, I don't give a shit. I'll pick the jury on a lunch break. I'll depose your expert. I, I tried. <laughs> I still, we still try. Everyone in my firm tries criminal cases wow. for, for the last 20 some years. Everybody, murder cases, everything. Because it gives you the ability, because when they say, I'll give you an extension of time in criminal cases, the judge will say, well, oh, Mr. Gattris, uh, why don't you read this over and we'll start tomorrow. You'll read a report, an expert's report. You'll get one day's notice on a criminal case. On a civil case, they're like, I need to have, the defense lawyer, I need to have 45 days, judge. Yeah. And you're like, hey, look, they just gave me this thing. Let's go in and do it. And, uh, but that being on your feet, like you are, and like you are, in family law. We were, we were talking about that. The, the one thing, so, you know, nowadays, especially in Iowa, uh, plaintiffs work, you, you're not seeing the courtroom often. Mm -hmm. And I started doing family law. First off, thought I was going to hate it. Ended up loving it. But I've been in front of a judge. I've been in front of, I mean, I've been testimony and cross and I, I don't think became, I have the heart for family law. Man. You know, oh, you have to separate yourself. If you can separate yourself I from the never. people you're representing, Dude, it's everything. Dude, we adopted our daughter and it was a seamless process and I've heard some stories whenever this stuff is fought. Like, I cannot imagine that being contested. And abuse oh. victims, oh. I mean, it's, oh. easier, I it's can, easier to do criminal work. When I say that, it's easier on the mind because... Um, no way. It's, it is easier on the mind in representation. The divorce family law is very traumatic. Yeah. But I feel that's why I like that's why you're doing whiskey, hey. bro. <laughs> hey, so what what's the best? Like if you had a preference, mm. do you prefer defending? Do you prefer criminal? Do you prefer family? I will, I will never defend a corporation. No. Like I will. I, <laughs> no, you no. want to prosecute? You want to go after? Yeah, I go the after. The, we go after the bad guys. David and Goliath. Best. You prefer yes. to be David. That's it. That's yes. all I've ever done, and that's it, all these guys it, do. Yes. Same man. All the same. since day one, since my family, literally mother and father came over from different countries. We started a restaurant. I've worked in a restaurant all my life, and we still have it 103 years. So is it Hero or Gyro? Uh, well, <laughs> it's Greek, either. we gotta know. Yeah, you know what yeah, we were yeah. selling? As most Greeks, we had a restaurant, and- uh, Mostly uncircumcised. And we, and we, had, <laughs> we were selling wieners, man. We were, and, uh, <laughs> we were selling hot dogs. And that, we still do it, 103 years later, 
uh, in Cumberland, uh -huh. Maryland. We still have it going on. So, so yeah, Cumberland, I went to undergrad in D.C. One of my good friends lived in Cumberland, so we were out there a lot. I, I never told you that. I'm in Cumberland a lot, man. We still have a restaurant there. I mean, it's 103 years. My brother, and he's a big steel. He had a big ring made of uh, Three River Stadium. Really? Yeah, he's oh. I got uh, one of the Pittsburgh bridges here. Yeah, one of the. You, yeah. you know that doesn't exist much anymore. The, this these what uh, these, tattoos? These, yes, no, it does. no, no, no. no. <laughs> these ancestral restaurants. Yep. And mm. and, and uh, you go to the the New England states. There are st there are literally restaurants and bars that have been there over a hundred years. You go anywhere else in the country, and it's a couple decades at most. And most of it are wow. chains, right? Like in Houston, Papa's restaurants. Sure. Okay, it's been around 20, 30 years, but there's no like. This is my grandmother, family's so heritage. It, it, so how is that in, in the whiskey realm? I mean, the, their family, he's got his family reserve right there. Yeah, but, but it, it started with him, right? Started it started with, with you, but like, is is there that blowback with the, the whiskey rule where there's like the big conglomerates? The, and there's all the, the conglomerates. Pops, like ConAgra. Yes, so. all, all of the family heritage, like, like legacy distillers are owned by major corporations yep. now. There were no small mom and pops that haven't been picked up yet. Heaven Hill, really? technically. They're owned by the same family. Shapira's. Yeah, but that's a... Oh. Yeah, it's it's a big machine right yeah. now. Nice family. There, I mean, they became <laughs> different. Not that Shapiro. <laughs> um, who's wow. the other ones? No um, in Lux that Row. That was another one. Don Lux. Yeah. He did some weird stuff. They, they sold out. Um, they sold MGP. Yeah, they sold. You said sold out. Yep. Well, I mean, sorry. Mm -hmm. They yeah. sold. See, that's, I just so want to know. Just like, hey, yeah, words, words, yeah, yeah. words, man. Speaking of, you want to hear something now? And people probably aren't going to like it. Do you know who was the second highest bidder on Barstown Bourbon Company? No. MGP. Oh yeah, well, didn't they just buy, they bought someone recently. They bought Luxco. Yeah, that's Lux right, Row. Lux Row, yeah. Yeah, yeah. They uh, were the second highest bidder, up. and they were down the street. We were just at Bardstown Distillery yesterday. Yep. Interesting place. Oh, beautiful. Oh, beautiful place. And they've got all the old whiskeys too. Billions of dollars were put, I mean, yeah. that place is gorgeous. They were no expense, well, <laughs> not a billion. Well, they about, spared about no half, expense. About half of that. Still. And that's also probably off the record. Super yeah, yeah. high tech place. Yes, correct. Cool. Yeah, yeah. It's a new, yeah. new thing happening. There's an old saying, and I and I hate to you know I hate to shit on Kentucky, but the, the saying <laughs> is, uh, the best uh, Kentucky bourbons in the past, the best craft whiskey or Texas whiskeys in the future. Yep. Uh, everyone in the Wait. craft industry, like these guys, they're getting better and better with every mm -hmm. release. They're learning, they're adjusting, whereas Kentucky's having such a hard time pick, uh, keeping up with everything that they are everything. They're kind of cutting corners a little bit, yep. so things are getting. Incrementally worse and worse with each new mm. Kentucky release, yep. whereas the craft industry is getting incrementally better. I like with craft beer, Bud and and Miller Coors, all of them didn't want to be involved. Yeah, in craft yeah. Until craft got really sexy. So they have, are they buying up craft? And now they, they yeah, they're yeah. like, hey, we want in, we want to buy it, and they'll pay. Same yeah. thing's happening in whiskey. I mean, Woodenville is one I love. I don't know what your thoughts are on. No, Woodenville. they're great. I think they're amazing. And I mean, slow down, but go ahead. You know what, I, I truly think Pump a bottle of Woodenville <laughs> against anything in Kentucky, I would rather Ooh, take the one, that's what I'm saying, so. under 10 years, under 10 years. Okay. All so right. I really like Woodenville, and there's a lot of people, traditionally, it's got to be distilled in Kentucky, and, and people would go to some bum that was distilling in Kentucky, and I, I mean that respectfully, somebody that's a no-name, and say, I want, I want my whiskey distilled so I can say it was distilled in Kentucky. Now, I'll tell you that the, the quality level is so much higher mm -hmm but it's not in the state of Kentucky, who cares? And I'm just thinking to myself, like, if we focused on the quality of the master distiller, the facility and all that, it is in Kentucky, but it's also everywhere else. I, I know wow. someone who just bought into a major Kentucky operation, 10,000 barrels. Uh, it's all pot still and barrel entry proof at 100. That's probably really good. Uh, it's the opposite. <laughs> really? Everything about that's a red flag to me. Everything, everything oh, about no, no. that's a red See, flag to me. See, this is stuff that we okay. can fight about. For me, barrel entry proof, no, I like We might have our first fight on a fucking show. <laughs> no, is, is, yeah, it, yeah. Tr is it true when they say the best way to make a million dollars in the whiskey business is to start with two? Oh, <laughs> yes and no. Yes. And the best way to make a million dollars in the vodka business is to hire a marketing company? Yeah, uh, Correct. It's all marketing. I mean, you're, you're hitting the nail on the head. Yeah. Tito's oh. isn't even made in Texas. Yep. And it's the number one selling Texas. No, no, it is. No, it's well, not. It should be. It it's should be. distilled the last <laughs> time in they Texas. They throw it through the still wait, wait, or whatever. I feel like they you have a case. We do have a case. It's got a case. Misrepresentation. Yeah, yeah. No, well, Templeton. well, you want to talk it's, about that. Oh, like, let's talk about oh, yeah. Templeton. Well, we can tell the story pretty quick. Templeton, obviously, uh, they were, and I'm still friends with both of the owners, old owner and Until new now. owner. 
Uh, no, yeah, yeah. I mean it's it's no, a cool I'll, story. I'll make that happen. And no, no, no. The, the cool thing say. is, or the the odd thing is, is they had a they had a real story. Real story was there was bootlegging in Iowa, and they wanted to tell the story, and it was one of the first people to actually tell a real bootlegging story. Problem was, we're going to source whiskey from other people and say that this was similar recipe as the actual stuff. It so, wasn't. It was just, just to add some color here, so you've got a legacy family that tells the story on the bottle of old recipe, 100 years old, et cetera, et cetera. But really what they were doing was sourcing from a major factory out of Indiana called NGP. And what? everyone buys. We got some duct tape shit. Yeah. Everyone buys from MGP. <laughs> it, uh, I buy from What is MGP? You said a lot. Midwestern Midwest Grain Products. Okay. So MGPI, Midwestern Grain Products of Indiana, also known as, uh, what was the other name they used to go by? Uh, they're now Squib and something. Yeah, they've changed their they've name. They've changed their name a bunch. There were yeah, Seagram's and then... Corporate Deniability Toy. Right, correct. Correct. Owners yeah. of the world. They're basically <laughs> the largest factory that everyone orders from. Yep. Bullet Rye's from them. I can give you a thousand. Dickel points. Rye. My stuff even. Yeah. So there was a, a class action lawsuit where they sued Templeton and said, look, you are presenting this as a family recipe thing. Mm. Class actions where you can literally provide the receipt or an empty bottle and you'd receive it 25 bucks or something. Yep. The problem too is they never put distilled in Indiana until mm -hmm. after the lawsuit. Yeah. That's right. That was wow. a problem. And that's a requirement. By law, if it's an out of state distillation, if I'm bottling in Texas, I have to say on the bottle it's distilled in that well, other state. What are the damages? Like, how do you do something like that? Because you do these cases. Yeah. Like, Quantification's hard. Um, sometimes you have data breach where personal information is disclosed, your medical records, you have something of that nature, even a misrepresentation. It goes back into, again, what's your gut? When you said you went from 0.10 to 0.5, and you're drinking, you're thinking at that time, you have drinking to Drinking and thinking. <laughs> Look at that. This yeah. is a good tagline. There we go. <laughs> drinking Second and year <laughs> tour today. That's a, that's a fifth arm of duty, breach, causation, damage, thinking and drinking. Yeah. And uh, so you have that going <laughs> on, genius. and you have to put this together, and you say, hey, what's the value? You build it up through some matrix on your own mm. with some lower level players. You build it up. Next thing you know, when somebody big comes in and hits you and says, "We don't have a you don't have a damage model," you're like, "Yeah, I do. Watch this." Mm -hmm. Well, and I think build it about it up the, myself. Think about the fact that they were doing fifty to a hundred thousand cases. Yep, a they year. were a big, big company. A year, they were Even a huge then. company. And you take somebody like yourself and you, yep. and, you and Bob, up, and you yeah. say, "What's it matter to you whether it's placed somewhere?" You're like. That matters because I'm a drinker. You built it for the store. It's misleading. Yeah. Yeah. It's misleading. I, I care about it. Maybe not Well, Fred or Joe or Sally down the street doesn't care, but, but they care about something else. Funny side story about that is they were bottling the MGP rye before MGP generally became like the popular thing. And looking back, people like you and I, people actually go after the brands that are, you know, bottling MGP distillate. So if they actually did say that at the right time and were transparent, they would have probably seen larger sales growth because when MGP had their boom, when everybody started going after all the bottlers like me, wow. you, that Smoke had the MGP, wagon, all, they're very all of them, popular. they wow. blew up. Now but the after the point. lawsuit, after the lawsuit, they blew up. So it, it's now a selling point, so it's so, hilarious. So what do they, I mean, what do they have to pay in that lawsuit to, I assume it's settled, I mean. It, it's settled and then I don't know one the of the owners numbers. left. I, yeah, I don't know the numbers either. Uh, but one of the owners left, they made out just fine. But the cool thing is, that family that we were talking about, the bootleggers. The actual history. The actual history in Templeton, Iowa. I live about an hour away. And they still bootleg to this day. And that's, and that's their signature. Their signature is the duct tape along the top. The fuck, that is their dude. signature. Okay? This, so, so this, right, this Nashville. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now we gotta have the it. The real bootleg so, uh, recipe is about if I, seventy percent. If, if I go blind, what happens? I mean, no, 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 you won't go blind. <laughs> no, no, no. One as eye long goes, as they take their one cuts. eye goes blind. Yeah, yeah. You get, yeah. <laughs> if you go blind, we have a couple. We, I know a couple lawyers. Oh my god! But the cool thing about my dad, used to, it's not high proof. It's only about like eighty. My dad cents. used to tell me if you jerk off too much, you go blind. <laughs> and I would say, Dad, I'm over here. <laughs> there you go. Uh, this is not. I love him because he's off camera. Where is he at? Yeah, my dad's. Uh, he, I don't know. He might be creeping somewhere. Cheers. Oh God. Guys, we're drinking bootleg. It's, it's yeah. not high proof. It's moonshine. This is, well, it's not even moon. Well, it's well, moonshine, yes. but the cool thing about the real recipe is it's mostly sugar. Back in the day, sugar was a lot easier to get a hold <laughs> this of. This is good. And it didn't raise, it didn't raise the very light. Lives. Very light. Yeah. No, but not, not light, like you're saying, the light hot. This is a light yeah. drink. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. why you guys confuse me, man, when you're saying you do the light shit. Well, there's this some legal like, terms. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I'll give you a lesson one day on legal terms. Yeah, you please. Uh, <laughs> 
but the the yeah, it's very it's very light oh, and soft. Good. It's and, a rum. Yeah, it's it's rum. Well, technically, it's a rum. So, oh. eh, sugar mash, about seventy percent sugar, and then they add rye for flavoring. But they steep it; they don't actually have it in there. I think that's technically a rum. Rum isn't as defined. Like we, yep. we got lucky, right? So in America, bourbon was defined early on mm -hmm. as. Uh, an American product, right? Our first. Do they do they make rum with corn? I mean, do they do that? Sugar, no sugar it, it's molasses. All, it's all sugar, sugar molasses or fresh cane juice. Um, but I don't think it's legally defined, other than the fact that it comes from sugar. Yeah. So this is in America, technically a rum, I guess. Wow, and dude. the rye would be spiced, but this is like 80, 86 proof. It's not high proof. No, it's good. But I mean, do you believe in that? Like I have an old thing where I, I truly believe they call it spirits for a reason. Like you can drink something if it, it speaks to you, that's your that's your jam, right? So like I've always had the, the whiskey thing, right? Like that was my favorite. I tried rums. I drank rum one time in college and up driving from DC to fucking New Orleans for Lot de Gras one time, straight. Mm. It was, don't remember the drive. That was very dangerous. But it was a good time, but that's what rum did to me. Well, right? I, I'm surprised your <laughs> I don't know social if it was media handle isn't. <laughs> That's what rum did to me. It, <laughs> it was Malibu rum too. Uh, uh, I wasn't, but I just want to see your reaction. It's yeah. barely rum. No. Uh, I'm surprised your, your social media handle isn't Bourbon Fun Bob. You know, it's, that it's, would have been it's, good. You know, you're you're you have been this. Oh my uh, god. Whiskey. Obs I mean, it, okay. I'll give you. So, I, I used to work in in corporate aviation for years. There was an HR department, right? You guys know what those are. <laughs> Uh, you know who HR is in our office? Sevy Fisher. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he was the one that was singing last yeah. night. Yeah. He's the one that me and him got uh, IV drips together this morning. He's, oh God. he's a great guy. But the, 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 this, there was like these boundaries, right? Like, you know, we're very serious. We're very professional. <laughs> um, and there, there is this change like when you move to the spirit side of the business. Like, we work in a very serious oh, distillery wow. operation. <clears throat> Which that requires so us to drink every to day. Yeah. yeah. There's like, so I, I, it, there's this how weird you... thing where it's like I, I drink like my doctor's like how, how many drinks a week do you have? I'm like, Ooh. wait, a week or per day? What's the Oof. question? You can't like, do those And questions. you're like, I, but here's the thing. I'll tell you the truth. I'll tell you the real answer. But don't judge me and and understand that it's part of the job. Uh, and I, I forgot my point here, but <laughs> that's because you're yeah, past yeah. 0.5. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Oh, past the point five. Bur <laughs> bourbon fun, Bob. Like yeah. you, you guys well, give this perception of like we're we are a professional law firm, yeah. but also we like to enjoy yeah. ourselves. But you should always enjoy yourself and everything you do where you're working. You should enjoy, it, right? We do like we talk about this all the time. We love life. Like you can practice law, yes. love life, do mm -hmm. your side hustle, do whatever you want. But my dad, a funny story about my dad and the same question. How much you drink per week? We, my dad and I have the same GP, general practitioner, right? And we have the same name, Robert Terrence Simon, right? So we come, we had a date of birth difference. We have the same GP. So we were in there for the same week for a physical, and the doctor asked us the same question, like, how many drinks do you have per week? And both of us said, Who the like, fuck's I, asking? No, no, no. <laughs> it was this, because you fill it out first. You fill out yeah, the question, no and it was like zero to 40. Right? <laughs> <laughs> and his answer was something similar. So they go in and they have to ask you the question, and like, well, I mean, like, could have zero drinks a week. Sure. I got 40. Like, it just depends where I am. And my dad answered the same fucking thing. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Like, and they're like, what? Now, how long do you define a week? No. Yeah. Uh, like, you're talking about like over a day, like a week? A Jupiter, added, a that'd Jupiter be like week. a day for me. Yeah. A Jupiter week? <laughs> a Jupiter, a Jupiter <laughs> week? <laughs> What's a Jupiter week? It's like three months. <laughs> oh, no, 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 A week's like, like, you want like a four hour week. You're like, oh. no. Like, the first four hours, that was like a week already. Yeah. Like, as soon as you show up in the office on Monday, you're like, Telecom. I'm using Jupiter week. Yeah, yeah, it's good. It's good. I mean, I don't, I don't do fast food. I don't do sodas. I, yeah, I don't do those things. Did you have a White Castle However, tonight? I, I won't do, I won't do White Castle. You did a good cleanse. But I, but I'll have a morning beer. It, what? It's a great breakfast. Dude, he, he had a beer before he shot all these oh episodes. My God. True yeah, story. Yeah, yeah, and it's great for weight loss, by the way. Do you know what's true? Sure. Yeah, Wait, you replace what? food with just alcohol, you lose weight like crazy. I don't drink for the most part Monday through Friday. What? Really? And I I run a distillery. Yeah. You should drink every really... day that ends in a while. <laughs> I think I think I think you need to change your uh, philosophy on life, Gene. I don't, I don't know how much time we have left, but I'm curious. I want to drink. Okay. A little bit of this first. We have about we three shoot minutes. It. So let's oh, go. Fuck. Knock it out. Well, let's, let's shoot that, this. and I want it. We got to do Here. the Stelzer. That's. We're gonna shoot a like five hundred dollars secondary market Armagnac. Because why not? Here. Don't do a heavy pour. Yeah, I've super had heavy. Five. I mean, super light. 
Uh, light again. What are you talking this about? This is light? a uh, light 20, 20, 20, 24 to 37 easy. year old Armagnac. Uh, oh, oh man, this smells amazing. It's made with right grapes. Away. Made, made with grapes. grapes. Oh, uh, no. Similar this to your incredible. cognac, but the reason why I sourced it from the Armagnac it's region. Color on this too. Yep. It is. This looks like oaky. a fucking like mage. Yep. Like, I do a lot of Dungeons and, you know and Dragons. It reminds it's like, me like, a lot of the old. It. You could get a dragon right. out of that bottle. The old right. KVD stuff. It's got that cinnamon to it. It actually says magic. It's very oaky. Like, don't get me wrong. Oaky is Jewish. Orthodox Christian. Oh, Lebanese. Orthodox Christian. Lebanese. I don't know the difference. He does the all religions are the same to him. All religions are the same to me. We're Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> that's a difference. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's a difference. Uh, hey, I think Johnny Cash talked about that. <laughs> but yeah, this is a little oakier, but just dense. A little lighter too. This yep. Is not cask drink? No, it's cask. Man, you insulted him. 54%. You should apologize. It drinks. It drinks like forty-five. It drinks like very underproof. And don't you like how oh, just voices. earthy oak? This is yeah. definitely way different than everything we had. It's got a guava note to it. What? In <laughs> indoor pool. Have you ever smell yep. an indoor pool? You yeah. Yeah. Chlorine. Indoor pool. Indoor pool's yeah. chlorine. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's most of us. And herpes. And do you know yeah. the I same notes I get humidity. on the old KBDs? <laughs> I get a and lot of the same house. profiles as the really old KBDs. KBDs? Uh, I love how these, uh, every interview's gotten better and better. Oh, yes, it's yeah. It's gonna devolve. <laughs> but we, we think- We're just gonna be like, hey, <laughs> you like law? <laughs> we little, think it's gotten better. You're a little, like law guys? Oh, or back. Oh, let's do the Celtic Shoot it. Wall. We can talk about this. All right, All right. This is a funny story. Aaron Goldfarb, first. Goldfarb. He wrote a book, uh, Hacking Whiskey. That was what it was. Yes. Hacking Whiskey. Great book, and I read that book before I even had a brand. Is this okay? like a scratch and sniff book? How big is it? <laughs> it it's a great book. No, he's he really, is a he's really well wonderful known. writer. Yeah, yeah. One okay, of the okay, best okay. whiskey writers, period. And so I read his book and I wanted to get into whiskey and all that. And one of the chapters of the book was he did Pappy Van Winkle, but he made it into Jello shots, okay? Do you Why do you do that? I was perception. Very about this. It's perception. Yeah. Everybody else in this whiskey world, I told you earlier this week, Hoity a guy toity, got overly, yeah, overly a guy got shit. A whiskey YouTuber that's one of the biggest YouTubers got shit for swirling a glass of 27 year old red breast too hard. It's gonna fracture the whiskey. Get Shut the fuck, the fuck out up. Here. Fuck yeah. you. Like, like, so here's here's yeah, yeah. what happened. It's over the top. A lot of pop and What I wanted to do to things. change the game and to make a statement is this is on shelves in Iowa. It's 26 year old whiskey that I sourced and oh, I put it in a seltzer. seltzer. Fuck. Fuck you. You're gonna piss people off. You basically, off. You basically off. did a Pappy and Coke in a can. I wanted to make a statement about the industry. You can't take it seriously. You need Good. to enjoy it while Good. you've got it. And the stories told are not the bottles on the shelf that you're flipping. It's the stories you tell with your friends and well, you have a little bit of fun. This is this is good. So this is a more or less a hard seltzer, but it's supposed to taste kind of like an old fashioned. It's with a uh, 26 year old black velvet. Of all things. Ooh. <laughs> I think there's a lot this of music. This is my lunch. In that. I love I this know. shit. And this so, uh, shoot. It's, it's supposed to be funny. Uh, but also, I think it tastes really good for what it is. Oh, it smells great. There. I got it. It's, it's so not high alcohol. It's like 10%. No. In Iowa, we've got caps on. <laughs> he loves it. Yeah. I want to get some of that other stuff. Oh, going it's got on. kind of that a. The bottle's uh, not open yet. A rice spice to it. Yep. But yeah, it's not, it's not supposed to be taken seriously, but this it's just fantastic. A good, guess how much it is for a four pack? Two thousand dollars. No, nine oh. bucks. <laughs> I guess wrong. Nine bucks. Bob, Bob's Bob's concept of money is a little skewed. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. A little bit. You, ever, you watch that, that uh, show $5, Succession? Do you watch Succession? Yes, it's incredible. fantastic. <laughs> I hated it. I hated it at first because I hate the characters. And then Succession oh, comes in, and they were and one of the things they say. Like he asks us. Hey son, how much does a gallon of milk cost? And these kids had no fucking idea, right? <laughs> Two thousand dollars. I don't know, oh, right? So that's same. A Fourteen shit. year old. Oh. Yeah, he's like. Hey dad, uh, you should make some money. He goes, uh, you think you can afford this? He goes, it costs $800. I'm like, I don't know. He goes, well, what do you make, like $3,000 a year? He goes, oh. then, and like a week later, it's like, what do you make, like $30 million a year? I'm like, no, neither of these. Come on, what are you doing? Yeah. I was like, come on. He goes, well, I want this pair of Easy's. I'm like, Dude, no, you can't have them. No, you can't. Let me call up Kanye easy. myself. Let me just call him up. Yeah, yeah. But I think the commonality is plus everybody here, we all grew up here without any money. No money. Zero. We were all broke drinking. As fuck. Broke as fuck. Working drinking hard. like anything. I was drinking Mad Dog 2020, like anything you get your MD hands 20, on. 20. You remember doing beer MD. math at 19? You're, I mean, sorry, at 21? <laughs> Unless you're West Virginia. We, you, West Virginia was an 18 for a while. So oh, you had to go down. Yeah. yeah. And I lived in Maryland. Uh, Pittsburgh was a 45 minute drive. Yeah, it was. Oh. And they had state stores in Pennsylvania. Yeah. All states, when you went, it We couldn't like get booze on Sundays. They had, th yes. And so you had three vodkas, 
three bur in the state stores in Pennsylvania, three bourbons. They have a sign that vodka. You see three cons because that's all the ABCC would sell. Boom, vodka, bourbon, scotch. I mean, there's three cons. And it'd be on a shelf, it looked like oh. some out of Russia. Now, in Maryland, I did not know until I went, to I was in Maryland all my life. And you could walk in, they had all these promos, cups and stuff. And then all of a sudden you walk to Pennsylvania, they're like, the state store, you're like, holy moly, there's only like three that choices. Yeah. Yeah, so I brought for my fraternity, the statutes run. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I used to bring all this whiskey over to Pennsylvania for our fraternity parties because there was a heck of a price on the state store. And in Maryland, everything is called discount liquors. You discount everything, <laughs> man. We, <laughs> we have bottles that are going to Canada. In Texas, they're 60. In Canada, they're 120. Well, you can make a lot of money. Hey, you hosers, that's cheers it because this yeah. is the end of <laughs> bourbon approved. So, Gene, yeah. Troy, what is your bourbon approved? Where do you like to live? Bob Simon, bourbon? California. Now I'm in California. <laughs> Dude, I love California. I love it. I'm <laughs> trying to tell my sons, both of them, go west, young man. Oh, go west. west. And I will follow. I'm going to remain in the heartland. That's very nice. I know. Cheers. Cheers. Man, I love You've done it. well. Thank and you, my you know what? You've done well. And here's the key this whole thing, mm -hmm. we used to all do a long time ago, the around without all this, yeah. just talking and BSing in a bar or in a- Best in a, time of your life, man. You know Best what, what, what you've done? Yeah. Seriously, you've taken this now, the old bar in the corner, a bunch of lawyers talking, mm -hmm. you've taken it and put it nationally. Yeah. And you have expanded well, it. Why can't, why can't you have these conversations all the fucking time? And I hate like- It's always happening. You've yeah. done it though. You, you it shouldn't it. be the, the speakeasy, you should be the speak loudly. You should be able to hear sure. all of these conversations, right? And you're I just thought of that. Fuck. Damn. 0.05, hey, I'm there, man. <laughs> I'm telling you, man. I'm speak telling you. Okay. Okay. YouTube, speak what is your bourbon approved before we close the episode? H&H. Where, <laughs> no. where, where do you live? You, you like it hot, right? I mean, you like a... Uh, cash drink. Cash drink guy. No, believe it or not, my favorite are the barrel proofs, but the barrel proofs that are very, very low. So the old Dickles that are in the high 80s, low 90s, those are the oh. best. I hate you? So where, much. where do you? I mean, do you like a heavy pour? Good. Or? I like a heavy. I, I like a heavy pour. So I was in South Carolina where they used to have the minis a long time ago. I asked them how do you make any money at the bar uh, when you're just pouring minis. Uh, you know what I mean? Airport yeah, minis. Yeah, yeah. And then all of a sudden I said, Hey, no, I like a heavy pour and um, I like it to be kind of smooth. Um, okay. Yeah. Easy. Very light. Eighty proof, ninety proof. Uh, yeah. Yes. M medium to a little heavy but not heavy because okay. my boys like it heavy. We're gonna close this episode. Chris Hart might fight you guys because he likes it a lot more hot. So we've had it other comes ones. in hot though. <laughs> Thank you guys. Cheers. Cheers, Cheers guys. Cheers. Bob. It's Man, great. That was a lot of drinking. Thank you guys. That was some Thank good you. shit. Cheers.